So just recently, I watched Milktooth's video on the problem with keyboard switches. It brought up great points regarding the hobby of mechanical keyboards and mechanical switches. However, there was one point I had to disagree with. Point number three is to de-emphasize measurements. Goodness for non-technological products like switches cannot be measured. You end up making a category error when you try to quantify that. Let me present to you all, force curves. Force curves measure the required force on a switch as a function of distance in the downstroke and upstroke of a switch. Now, I believe the two most important factors about a switch is the feel and the sound. And force curves are able to tell you a lot about the feel of the switch. Take a look at this force curve of 62 gram Boba U4Ts. Just looking at it, there are many objective qualities that can be read from the switch such as tactile peak force, tactile event location, bottoming out force, and bottoming out distance. Sometimes they label the actuation points, so we're able to get the actuation distance and actuation force as well. But there are many other descriptors of a switch that can be found using force curves. Number one, the heaviness of the switch. How heavy a switch is seems like a simple answer, but I'll give an example. Take a Gatoron Milk Yellow versus a Gatoron Oil King. The bottoming out force is heavier on yellows, but the switch starts off heavier for Oil Kings. So which switch is heavier? Now, I think what people mean by heavy is the amount of effort it requires to press a switch. That effort is most accurately characterized not by force, but the work, which is the integral of force times distance. On this graph, that would be the area under the curve. Calculating this, the old kings would technically be heavier, but with this small of a difference, I think we would feel these switches to be equally heavy. I think this can be useful when, for example, if you know you fatigue when typing on a certain switch. You can measure this area for that, and now you'll know if you're going to consider using a switch with a greater area, you'll most likely be fatigued typing on them. Number two, the strength of the tactile bump. The bump that you feel is entirely characterized by the drop in the force at its peak to the lowest point. The usual way you get the strength of the bump is to just find the difference between the force at those two points. Generally speaking, I think this is a good enough way to quantify the strength of a tactile bump. We can definitely see that cherry browns have a weaker tactile event than say, holy pandas. However, sometimes a tactile bump seems weaker when we put in a stronger spring. So how do we account for that? I would think we can account for this by dividing the difference between the peak force and the lowest force by the average force during the tactile drop, which can be approximated by the average force between the peak force and the lowest force. Take a look at Cherry Mix Brown versus Pewters. Many claim that Pewters have a bigger bump despite the drop being around the same in the force curve. But if we divide it by the average force during the drop, we see that Pewters have a higher value corresponding to a stronger bump. Number three, the sharpness slash snappiness of the tactile bump. Since the bump is characterized by the drop in force at its peak to the lowest point, its roundness can be characterized by the distance between these two locations. If you compare Gatoron kangaroos to Boba U4Ts, Gatoron kangaroos have a sharper bump. Again, I believe this is generally a good enough way to quantify the feeling, but I believe a more accurate characterization is to divide that distance by the drop in force between the two locations. Higher the value, the rounder the tactile feel. Take a look at Cherry Browns versus Kale Box Royals. Box Royals are known to be the king of sharp tactility, so much so that no one wants to use them because it's just too much. If you take only the distance, Browns and Royals have around the same sharpness. But when I compare them, Browns definitely feel rounder than Royals. And if you divide the distance by the drop in force, it gives a greater value for Browns corresponding to a rounder bump. Number four, the mushiness of the bottoming out. This quality is much easier to see in a force curve. Take your average silence, which say Boba U4s, and compare them with Boba U4Ts, which are basically the identical non-silent counterpart. And you can see how the force curve increases much more aggressively for the U4Ts. The more vertical the end behavior, the less mushy it is. Number five, the scratchiness of a switch. To be honest, this one's a little iffy, but I thought I'd mention it anyway. Scratchiness can be seen on a force curve by how much the force deviates from a perfectly smooth curve. Looking at Novel Key's Cream Switch is widely regarded as the scratchy linear switch. I must admit, I actually can't tell too well. You can see these little bumps. 
compare these with alpacas and you can kind of see a difference. Although, like I said earlier, I must say that this one's much harder to tell. In the real world, there's going to be some tolerance issues and noise when you measure things. And those two things can basically mask any measure of scratchiness that exists in a switch. Lastly, there is one quality that I haven't heard much about, and that's how smoothly the switch transitions between pre-travel, tactile buildup, tactile drop, and the rest of the key feel. I recall using Hako Real Clears around four years ago, underrated switch by the way, and I distinctly remember the tactile buildup, drop, and the rest of the key feel to be very, very distinct from one another. Looking at the force curve, it depicts exactly how that felt. Now compare this to Topra, which I believe has the most seamless transitions between the different states, and that can also be seen just by taking a look at the force curve. Maybe there are other qualities I'm missing, but these are at least the uh, major ones I could think of. In the end, I, I know what Milktooth was saying. He was saying that your preference in key feel is a subjective thing, and it's impossible to know how a switch feels and whether you'll like it or not unless you actually try them, and I think that's true partially. Force curves can't tell you whether you'll like a switch or not, but it can give you a good idea of how it feels and you can compare the force curves to other switches that you may have tried before. Personally, I just think force curves are super cool. I just like looking at them and picking apart how what I feel in a switch translates to what I see in its force curve. I'm currently planning on making my own force curve measuring tool so I can measure the force curves of my own Franken switches. Anyway guys, uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe, or not, if, if you don't want to. And uh, yeah, leave a comment down below if you think I gave away wrong information or something. And yeah, goodbye.